Nuestra siguiente invitada sostiene que la educación debe fomentar el pensamiento crítico y la inclusión social. Está convencida también de que los estudiantes y los profesores tienen una increíble capacidad para, adoptar, para adaptarse a los retos. Retos como el que ahora vivimos, pero para apoyarlos en ese desafío son esenciales las políticas comunes, programas como Horizon Europe, Erasmus Plus o Creative Europe. ¿Qué podemos esperar de estos programas? Bueno, pues eso es lo que va a explicarnos Marilla Gabriel, comisaria europea de Innovación, Investigación, Cultura, Educación y Juventud. Welcome, Marilla. We can't wait to hear what you have to share with us today. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, it's a great pleasure for me to join you. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak about such an important topic. And I would like to start by saying that our societies are facing significant challenges, challenges that cannot be ignored or left for tomorrow. Climate change, digital transformation, the actual health crisis, just to name a few. And all these issues deserve our attention. And to face them, we must change. And this means universities are our driver. They are our hope that we'll be able to succeed in these transformational processes. And it is very good that the higher community education is so engaged. We need, we need your readiness to adapt, your wisdom and your creativity. We need you to provide our citizens with the necessary knowledge and skills and to create and attract more talents, researchers, bright people here in Europe to say to say them that Europe is your home. And that's why for me, again, it's an occasion to say thank you very much for your engagement. We count on you because we would like to reach our objectives together with you, set out in the Union's recovery plan, the European Green Deal, and the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Now, I would like to focus my intervention on the three main initiatives that I presented last month. That's the framework of our European knowledge strategy. We are talking here about a new dynamic European research area, a European education area that we would like to see as reality by 2025, and the Digital Education Action Plan. So first, let me start with the European research area. What is important since the beginning? That we need to assure real synergies, synergies between European research area and European education area. Because what unites these three initiatives, it's our desire to offer a common response to the challenges of an inclusive green and digital Europe. A Europe that can tap on the potential of all citizens, including women, in all areas of study or work. And we need to do more, and I think that our initiatives can give some good, encouraging examples. First, I'd like to start with the European Research Area, as I already said it. Of course, we have the European Research Area now for 20 years. We have good successes, just um, to mention a few of them. We have a world-class research infrastructures. We have 7 billion of investments from our national member states. We really have done a lot in order to, to have lowering geographical barriers to researcher collaborations and mobility. And initial steps were done to enhance, enhance access to open, reusable scientific information. We all have seen how important it is, open access and open science during the, the crisis. However, the European performance on research and innovation has stagnated since 2012. And major players, players from Asia in particular are gradually growing. Recent figures show that the European research and development investment is at 2.19% of the GDP, far from our objective of 3%. So that means that on average, only two out of 100 euro generated in Europe are invested in research. And we need definitely to change this. We need to see how the excellent results that we have in science can be translated into products and services, how we can create markets thanks to the excellence of our researchers and our universities. And that's why now we propose new four objectives of the new European research area. First, 
we need to prioritize investments and reforms in order to accelerate the green and digital transformation, to increase our competitiveness as well as the speed and depth of the recovery. We need to simplify and facilitate the interplay between national and European RNI system, and that will be at the core of a new non-binding pact for research and innovation in Europe that we, the Commission, we propose as a basis for our member states to reinforce their commitment to share policies and principles. Second, improving access to excellence. In order to achieve stronger RNI systems across the European Union, because inclusiveness and excellence are the two sides of the same coin. That's why we would like to see that members, member states with lower performances are able to join the excellence. And that's why we would like to put in place the European Research Area Forum for Transition. And we would like to support our member states in our research innovation community to strengthening the mobility opportunities for researchers to access excellence and expand their experience through dedicated mobility schemes between industry and academia. And that's the third point. We would like now to translate the research innovation results into the economy. It means fostering resilience and competitiveness of our economies and societies. And that's why we would like this time to propose to have a common industrial technology roadmaps between academia and business in order to see how we can translate the results into products and services. And finally, there is a need to progress on the free circulation of knowledge, considering an ethical and human-centric approach that's the added value of our European approach to research and technological development. We need to invest in developing the skills of our researchers while connecting all actors across Europe, including in education, training and labour market. So you can see the new European research area will support Europe to restructure its research landscape. And that will be done through cross-border cooperation, critical mass building, better coordination and improvement of national research policies and systems. And this will be done in synergies with the European education area. And this brings me to the second flagship initiative, the European education area. Now, what you'd like to see, that European education area this time will be a reality by 2025. Because there is some non-acceptable numbers in, in Europe. You know that more than 40% of adults in Europe have insufficient digital skills, only 5% of students can have Erasmus Plus experience. Education investment in many member states has been continuously decreasing. And as a result, now this time, we would like together European research area and European education area to bring better results. And that's why I'm very glad that today you have rectors coming from different uh, universities in Europe because we count on them for our flagship initiative the European University Alliances. Now, actually, we have 41 alliances with 280 universities engaged in this, in this initiative. What is different this time is that we, we would like to see ecosystems with the decenter our universities, but by adopting a challenge-based approach to learning, teaching, and research. And our hope is that these alliances will set a model that will be enough flexible, it can be used by institutions across our continent. Yes, we have challenges to solve. We need finally to, to find solutions about the automatic recognition of, of diplomas. We need to think about the European degree. We need to see how to tackle all these national barriers that actually we have. And in this, in this respect, it will be very important, the role of the European universities on something new. It's my proposal to have a European framework for micro-credentials, because we know that people in the workforce need to reskill and upskill, given the pace of change in the labor market. But for many, it is impossible to take a long break from work and get a degree. This is why we need flexibility in providing skills 
and diversified, innovative and accessible opportunities for citizens. Actually, we are working with our stakeholders on this. And of course, I, I count on our universities to allow us to have these opportunities as fully recognized and quality certified. And in this framework, in this context, it's very important to have a more clear picture what happened between the labor market and our graduates. Because actually, we would like to have a new initiative, a European graduate tracking initiative, because this is the link with the labor market. Feedback from graduates after they have finished their education is essential for ensuring that the knowledge, skills and competencies acquired by students are of high quality and relevant to the world of work. We don't have this data for all our Euro European member states. We started with eight of them. I can only encourage all the member states to join us in this initiative because that will be useful for our students, for our universities, for the labor market, for us as decision, decision makers. Finally, I would like here, when we talk about the European education area, to touch uh, something completely new. We, we would like to, to have now, in order to facilitate the green transition, an education for climate coalition. I think that we need to take into the consideration the wish of our young people to be engaged in, in, this, in this endeavor. We need really to see how with the whole education community, through a renewed commitment for climate change and actions with quantified targets, we can see where it is possible and what we can do in order to accelerate some of the processes. And one special special mention to women, because I'm, that's, that's a topic very close to my heart. We, we have gender balance when we talk about PhD graduates, but we need more women in decision-making process. Only 24% of our rectors in Europe are women. So we will be very glad to, to work together with all of you in order just, just to reflect the diversity of our society and to work as, as a team. And final word, we need all these measures to be inclusive. Even today, too many competent people are excluded from higher education due to social, economic or cultural reasons or lack of support and guidance. And we, can, we cannot afford to leave people behind. All these me measures for us are important and that's why allow me to share with you that as a next step, step of the area of higher education, we'll launch an online public consultation aimed at the co-creation of a transformation agenda by the end of next year, 2021. So we must start to work immediately. And finally, the last, the third part of my intervention is linked to the Digital Education Action Plan. We, can, we, we know that we cannot tackle the challenges we face without being able to use all the tools at our disposal. This is why we need to improve digital education. During the crisis, we have seen that there is some weaknesses, but we have some very, very good strengths. The weaknesses, we need to work on connectivity, we need to, to, to work on equipment, we need to, to, to work on more training for our teachers, for our young people. But at the same time, what was extraordinary, that was the creativity and the mobilization of all the people engaged in this education process. So I think that in our digital education plan, what is important first is to identify the two main pillars of our initiative. First, developing a high performing digital education ecosystem equipped with all the tools our educators and learners need to become digitally proficient. Of course, we'll have initiatives for connectivity and equipment. For connectivity, my proposal is to have connectivity for schools initiative for rural and remote areas. And for equipment, what is important now is to share this message with our member states because actually they have maybe for a first time a great flexibility to use the money coming and the funds coming from regional funds, coming from next generation in order to provide this to our universities and our schools. And one, one important thing, because equipment and connectivity is one thing, but we need quality online content. That's why... My intention is to launch a feasibility study on the creation of a European exchange platform. Europe needs to catch up and create 
its own common space to share certified online resources and link existing education platforms. Second pillar of our digital education action plan is enhancing the digital competencies of European citizens. We need here to pay attention to both basic and advanced digital skills and competencies. We need to better understand the data intensive technologies such as artificial intelligence. And when we talk about artificial intelligence, two concrete initiatives. We need to fix an et ethical principles with the, the use of artificial intelligence in our education systems, because definitely that's the next game changer. But there is a lot of issues that we have to address, especially because in Europe we have values and we have principles, and our approach is human-centered approach. The second thing is to have more girls on artificial intelligence, because artificial intelligence is working with a big amount of data. There is a huge risk to reproduce some bias, discriminations. So, so my, my wish is really to work all together in order to bring more women in STEM education. Because when we look at this, we can see that 54% of all higher education students in the EU are women, but only 17% are doing ICT. And I think that here we need to, we need to use just their, their potential. Finally, very, very practical, practical question, how to coordinate all this? Because there is a lot of different initiatives as, as you already have seen. What we would like here is to create a European digital education hub. This hub will support our member states by exchanging experience and good practices and it will link digital education initiatives and strategies and connect national authorities, private sector, experts, education and training provi providers and civil society. It's up to all of us to see how this digital education hub will work. But my wish is to have all our member states in and finally to facilitate the extraordinary work that is done in all our member states. In conclusion, through education, research, and innovation, we can achieve our goals and face the challenges that change our way of life. And our ambitious knowledge strategy, I think, that provides a path to this. And this is the way forward is if Europe is to remain competitive and innovative on a global scale while remaining true to its core values. This can be challenging times, but as we work together, we can make sure that higher education emerges stronger and more connected. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share these initiatives and thoughts with you and count on our full support.